the many, many great stars of the past will emerge. And there's just a shot of some of the activity. We were down in the press room uh, before the game. We had a chance to visit with, uh, with Mickey, Whitey Ford, Yogi Berra, and names that I have been a fan of personally for a long, long time. Again, that is Lee McPhail, and behind him, Michael Burke, and just in between, the Yankee manager, Ralph Houck. And a chance starts. We want Mickey. This is the first time Mickey's been back to New York, I believe, since he retired. Made the announcement, of course, when the Yankees were in spring training. And I think this is the first time he's been back to the town he calls his own. Listen to the chant. There is Frank Messer, and just in front of him, Lee McPhail. As we told you, Frank, who normally would be sitting up here as one of the broadcasters, is the master of ceremony. Elston Howard, of course, the teammate of Mickey's, walking alongside number 32. We're just about to get underway now. Listening to an interview that Marv Albert had with Mickey uh, before the game, Joe Pepitone, whose home run won the first game here. Your attention, Yankees. please. Stadium announcer Ladies and Bob Shepard, possibly you can hear in the background. That's Gil McDougal walking this time, alongside Elston Howard. We direct your attention to the area between second base and the pitcher's mound, and our master of ceremonies to mark this high moment in Yankee history, the Yankee announcer, Frank Messer. Thank you, Bob Shepard. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This truly is an historic occasion. We are here to honor one of the greatest of all Yankees, Mickey Mantle, and to officially... and to officially retire his number seven uniform. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Mayor Lindsay has proclaimed today, Sunday, June 8, 1969, Mickey Mantle Day in New York City. Spread out in the outfield are 12 World Championship or American League pennants. These pennants are emblematic of the 12 pennant winning teams on which Mickey Mantle played. And standing behind each of these pennants is a former teammate of Mickey's representing each of these championship teams. First, I would like you to greet each of these dozen representatives of Yankee championship teams on which Mickey Mantle starred. For Mickey's rookie season, 1951, when he hit his first 13 homers and played 40 games at Kansas City before returning to the stadium for keeps. Here's a pitcher who won 21 games in 1951, twice defeated the Giants in that fall's World Series, allowing only one earned run. Himself, a member of six Yankee champions, his teammate, Steady Eddie Lopat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey had his first 300-plus season in 1952, hit 23 home runs, and his first two home runs in the World Series. 
representing the 1952 world champion Yankees is a man who hit 309 for the season and 348 against the Dodgers that fall, a member of five straight Yankee world champions. Now, a Yankee scout in Ohio, welcome back Gene Woodling. In 1953 marked the Yankees' record fifth straight pennant and world championship. And that fall, Mickey hit a grand slam home run against the Dodgers in the series. The Yankee first baseman that year hit 17 home runs and starred in the World Series and in seven fall classics for the Yankees. Here's another teammate, Joe Collins. The Yankees were stopped in 1954, although that club won 103 games. But the Bombers were back on top in 1955 with Mickey's 37 homers and 113 runs batted in leading the way. One of his great teammates was the Yankee shortstop who won most valuable player honors. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, representing the 1955 team, recently elected by you Yankee fans as the greatest Yankee shortstop in history, my broadcasting partner, the scooter Phil Rizzuto. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, representing the 1956 world champion Yankees, is another of my broadcast sidekicks. A former Yankee infield star, a Babe Ruth award winner, who had a lifetime 263 batting average for nine Yankee seasons, here's Jerry Coleman. No mention of that 1956 team can be made without reference to the stunning record set that season by today's honored guest. In 1956, Mickey won the first of his three American League Most Valuable Player Awards. He also won the Triple Crown and the Pro Athlete of the Year Award hitting 353 with 52 homers and 130 runs batted in. In 1957, Mickey Mantle repeated as most valuable player with a career high average of 365. Another star of that team, a former American League Rookie of the Year in 1951, hit a series Grand Slam homer, played on eight pennant winners and five world champions, an all-star at three infield positions, welcome Gil McDougald. In 1958 was the year of the great series comeback. Down three games to one to Milwaukee, the Yanks swept the last three and became world champions. Mickey led the league in homers again, this time with 42. The Majors, the Majors top pitcher in 58 with a 2.01 earned run average 
was the man who won more games than any Yankee in history, set a World Series record of 33 consecutive scoreless innings among his many notable feats, Ed Whitey Ford. The Yanks had a fine team in 1960 and scored an all-time record of 55 runs in the World Series, yet lost to the Pirates. Mickey hit 400 in that series with three homers and 11 RBIs. Representing, representing that 1960 club was the second baseman who set a series record with six RBIs in one game and 12 for the series, Bobby Richardson. Nineteen sixty one was the year of the home run at Yankee Stadium and that exciting race at Babe Ruth's crown. Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris alternately led in the race, with Roger eventually setting the new record of sixty one. Mickey Mickey that year hit a career high of fifty four, leading the team in hitting that year with a three forty eight average was one of the great catchers in Yankee history. A former MVP, Babe Ruth Award winner, series star, and now back as first base coach of the Yankees, here's Elston Howard. As you'll recall, Mickey missed part of the 1962 season with injuries, but still batted a robust 321 with 30 home runs. That last Yankee World Championship club had the league's rookie of the year, who also led the Bombers in hitting in the series win over the Giants. Representing the 1962 World Champion Yankees, here's Tommy Tresh. Mickey Mantle missed most of the 1963 season after his serious injury in Baltimore, but came back with that dramatic pinch homer here in the stadium after missing two full months of action. The young star of that 63 team who hit 271 with 27 homers and 89 RBIs was the Yankee first baseman and still is Joe Pepitone. Mickey came all the way in 1964 to lead the Yankees to their 29th pennant and last up to now. He hit 303 with 35 homers and 111 RBIs. And his three series homers against the Cardinals established a new World Series career home run record of 18. The youngster who pitched the Yankees into the World Series after his August call up from Richmond is here representing the 1964 Yankees. The series star that fall and pitching mainstay ever since, Mel Stottlemyre. Ladies and gentlemen, there they are, the 12 teammates who have meant so much to Mickey and mean so much to us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce our guest of honor, here is the man who officiated at the three previous retirement ceremonies. And appropriately, he is here for this occasion. 
It is my pleasure to introduce the longtime voice of the Yankees, Mr. Mel Allen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hello there, everybody. My great thanks to the Yanks, Mike Berkley, McPhail, and all. This is one of the proudest moments I've ever had on this hallowed baseball ground. And I'm terribly privileged to have the honor to once again call from the dugout one of the all-time Yankee greats, the magnificent Yankee, the great number seven, Mickey Mantle.
Here is the president of the New York Yankees, Michael Burke. attention for just a moment. We would like to make a presentation to Mickey if we could get your attention for just a moment. We'd like if you, if you can hold it a minute, we'd like to make a presentation to Mickey. Thank you very much for your attention. I know that Mickey appreciates this more than perhaps anything he's ever done. Uh, but we would like very much to have your attention simply to complete a program that we've laid on for Mickey, uh, honoring him for his great years with the Yankees. Ladies and gentlemen, 20 years ago, at the tender age of 17, Mickey Mantle was signed by the Yankees and started his illustrious baseball career. The men who played such a big part in Mickey's early years are here today, and we would like to bring them out right now. Mickey's first Yankee general manager, who built so many Yankee championship clubs, Mr. George M. Weiss, and the Yankee scout who signed Mickey in Oklahoma, and he's still scouting for the Yankees today, his newest Yankee being Bobby Mercer, Mr. Tom Greenway. <laughs> Mickey played under two minor league managers, and in less than three seasons in the minors, hit over 300 each year. Mickey's manager the first two years at Independence and Joplin, and now a Yankee special scout, Harry Kraft, and Mickey's manager at Kansas City, the former Washington general manager, Mr. George Selkirk. Mickey, 
You played under four managers with the Yankees. The first, Casey Stengel, wanted to be here today, but he could not make it. He did send greetings in a telegram I have here, which reads verbatim, many thanks for your personal record before retirement of Yankee number seven. Those were his words, Mickey. Signed, Casey Stengel. And Mickey, we do have, we do have two of your managers here and two good personal friends, Ralph Hauk and Yogi Berra. Mickey's family is sitting in the mezzanine in the enclosed box at first base, and we'd like to introduce them now. Mickey's wife, Mrs. Merlin Mantle, Mickey's mother, Mrs. Lovell Mantle, and his mother-in-law, Mrs. Reba Johnson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there was only one man who could make this next and most significant presentation. Mickey's predecessor in center field, as well as in the Hall of Fame, the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. I know just how you feel out here today. This is a nervous moment. But it's also a very thrilling one, too. I'd like to present you with this plaque, which will be right along in our spot out there in center field. The Yankees have also asked me, too, that you fans are invited to see this with his great achievements after every ball game. Congratulations, Mickey. It's nice to be here along with all these fans. And now to make this next presentation to Mickey most appropriately, here's his good friend and longtime teammate, Whitey Ford. Mickey, we've had a lot of fun all these years playing baseball here at Yankee Stadium. It's my honor to thank you on behalf of your teammates for the many thrills you have given us. Those clutch hits, booming home runs, great catches, and an occasional strikeout. <laughs> and for all you did in the clubhouse and on the bench, to make those real great Yankee teams click. Now number seven is being retired. The Yankees have asked me to give to you this uniform.
Ladies and gentlemen, another uniform of Mickey's will be given to the Baseball Hall of Fame at Cooperstown, New York. And now, Mickey Mantle, Yankee Stadium is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before I make any personal comments, I have one last task here, and it's a very, I'm going to enjoy it very much, it's a pleasant one. Uh, Joe gave me a plaque that they're going to hang on the center field wall, and certainly if they give me one, his has got to be hanging just a little bit higher than mine. I think to the one, that, to the greatest Yankee that I ever saw, I didn't get to see Babe or Lou, but Joe is the greatest one I ever saw, and I think that it's going to be a great honor for me to present him with this plaque. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Mickey. I just want to add, this certainly is a pleasant surprise. I had no idea this was going to happen. And I just want to say that I'm out there with great company. Thank you so much. Thank you. When I walked into this stadium 18 years ago, I felt much the same way I do right now. I don't have words to describe how I felt then or how I feel now. But I'll tell you one thing, baseball was real good to me. And playing 18 years in the Yankee Stadium for you folks is the best thing that could ever happen to a ball player. Now, to think that the Yankees are retiring my number seven with numbers three, four, and five tops off everything that I could ever wish for. I've often wondered how a, a man who knew he was going to die could stand here and say that he was the luckiest man in the world. But now I think I know how Lou Gehrig felt. This is... Uh, It's not only a great day for me, it's a great day for all of the mantles. My wife, Merlin, my four boys, my mother, and I wish my father could have been here, but... It's been a great honor. I'll never forget it. God bless you all, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mickey. And now, so that Mickey's fans... And now, so that Mickey's fans can bid him a personal farewell, he'll take one last turn around Yankee Stadium.
I timed uh, the first tribute that was paid, and if you, if you watching at home, I'm just first of all so very sorry that you could not be here. This is Pat Summerall. I can hardly talk myself as the tribute to Mickey Mantle is over now. Number seven will never be worn again at Yankee Stadium. The pinstripes with the number seven on the back have been retired to go with three, four, and five. As I said, if you had a dry eye, then I'm sure you were by yourself. I timed the tribute when the former voice of the Yankees, Mel Allen, was called out of the Yankee dugout to introduce Mickey. And for nine minutes, this throng at Yankee Stadium stood until they had to be asked to be quiet. As you look out in center field, the plaques that were just presented by Joe DiMaggio to Mickey Mantle will go up along with those others in back of the monuments here in center field at Yankee Stadium. Mantle then uh, presented one which he said to DiMaggio should go just a little bit higher than any that would be given to me. And it also, Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle, the man who succeeded DiMaggio in center field here at the stadium, those two plaques will go up. The tribute, the people who came, the people in the ballpark, the ex-teammates, has to be, has to be one of the most emotional and one of the great thrills for everyone who had the opportunity to be here. I think that says it all. Happiness is Mickey. They'll never make another plaque. They'll never make another uniform. The Yankees won't with number seven on it. They tribute, they, uh, they applauded for nine straight minutes. They would not be quiet until Mickey came to the microphone. As he swung around the car, the warning track here at the stadium for the last time, there were four more minutes of standing ovation until he disappeared into the Yankee dugout for the last time. So this is Pat Summerall, who also has been privileged to have been here in place of Frank Messer, in place of Phil Rizzuto, and Jerry Coleman, who were former teammates and who took part in the ceremonies honoring Mickey.